Good morning and welcome to the Fund It Fast Chat. I'm Rochelle Butler, Energy Manager with the San Joaquin Valley Clean Energy Organization. I appreciate you being with us this morning. I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. Uh, we are going to get going in just a couple of seconds. First, we're going to take care of our housekeeping. Please make sure that, um, or please make note that all of your microphones have been muted upon joining the call. This is simply to minimize background noise. As always, if you have any questions at all, I highly encourage you, go ahead and drop them into the chat box. We always make point, uh, we always make it a point to save time at the end of the presentation to address any of those questions that you might have. Next, I would like to invite everyone to connect with us. You can do so on any one of many platforms. You can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, Spotify, or you can just reach out via email or by telephone. And don't worry if you didn't get all of that. Um, just remember, you can get access to any of our resources by going to our website. Uh, our website is at sjvcleanenergy.org. Once again, that is SJV cleanenergy.org. And with that, I am going to jump right in. And now, if you are a friend of the Fast Chat, you already know uh, that I like to take a quick moment and just point out other webisodes of the Fast Chat where we've discussed related topics. So believe it or not, we've never talked about uh, microgrids in the past. Um, it's a topic that is well worth the attention, and it's very timely, I may add, but we'll get into that in just a few, um, just a few moments. Um, the reason I felt this topic would be a perfect bookend to our discussion on EV charging programs, which we did in January and February, is because electric vehicle charging can also be an integral part of a microgrid system. Uh, but I'll talk a bit more about that shortly. I would also like to invite you all to check out our fast chat on um, Pathway to Zero. Uh, during the fast chat, we discussed both the Self-Generation Incentive Program, or SGIP for short, and the Southern California Regional Energy Network, SoCalREN for short, their Pathway to Zero program. Uh, both are great programs. I encourage you to check out that fast chat because it also talks about relevant topics involving distributed energy resources and energy storage. And while you are over there, checking out our YouTube channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This does help us out a ton, but even more importantly than that, it helps other folks just like yourself to find our content. Well, why are we, why are we talking about microgrids now? Well, if you're here, I'm sure you're well aware of the current state of our electricity grid, and it ain't that pretty. In fact, according to an article in Public Utilities Fortnightly, which was published in April of 2020, the average age of the installed base is 40 years old and with more than a quarter of the grid 50 years or older. To compound the issue in California, we are experiencing a record number of climate events, namely wildfires, which has brought about the need to increase public safety power shutoffs or PSPS events. Um, these don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon, unfortunately, and if all that wasn't enough, according to an annual study performed by the California Energy Commission, California will require 1.2 million electric vehicle chargers by 2030 to accommodate the state's goal to cease production of gas-powered vehicles by 2035. As of July of 2021, when the study was published, California had about 70,000 EV chargers. So from 70,000 to 1.2 million, that is a tremendous amount of demand coming online over the next eight years. So what does this all have to do with microgrids? Many see microgrids as a viable way to help deal with each of these issues. And in order to understand why, let's talk a little, about, a little bit about what a microgrid is. Well, actually, first let's talk about what a microgrid is not. So microgrid is actually a term that people kind of get confused here and there. Um, frequently, people use this term to describe a simple distributed energy system. A good example of a simple distributed energy system is like rooftop solar panels. 
And quite often it happens that people like to think of their solar generation system as a microgrid, but then they're really surprised when they lose power during an outage. A microgrid has the ability to operate apart from the grid so that they don't lose power during an outage. Um, the term microgrid also gets tossed around um, in reference to backup generators. This is also not quite right. A backup generator is designed to work in the case of an emergency only. Um, a microgrid, on the other hand, is always working to manage and to supply energy to its customers. So what is, what is a microgrid? A microgrid system is an energy, a microgrid system of energy resources connected together using a control center to achieve a specific or a combination of specific outcomes for the customer. Some examples of these goals include things like cost savings or energy efficiency or uh, environmental, uh, environmental impact goals. So I have a diagram here on your screen to illustrate the different components of the microgrid. And as you can see, right there in the middle is the microgrid controller. That's the brains of the whole operation. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the energy load or the end user of the, of the energy. Uh, this can be whatever you like, whatever is important. It can be, or whatever is, um, whatever is, um, applicable. It can be as large or as small as you like. For example, your microgrid can power an entire community or a campus. Uh, it can power an individual commercial or an industrial building, or it can powder, power a community of homes. It really just depends on what makes financial sense in each um, individual set of circumstances. On the right hand side of the screen, there are the energy sources. So essentially where the power comes from. Most commonly, this is a combination of your local investor owned utility, as well as a renewable energy source of some sort, usually uh, solar or wind. Uh, down at the bottom of the diagram, we have our backup energy sources. There's a few different options here. We have battery storage, uh, we also have a generator there, as well as combined heat and power. Lastly, I want to call attention to our little electric vehicle at the bottom left-hand corner. I didn't forget about him. Um, he is nestled in between the backup energy source and the energy load because EVs actually fit into both categories. They represent load when they are charging. However, they can also be used as a backup battery supply because, in essence, their batteries on wheels, right? Um, they can be fitted with an adapter that allows them to uh, that allows power to also be drawn from them in order to power a building. So these are the components of a microgrid. Now you can see very easily why a microgrid can't just be one thing. It's made up of many different components controlled by a centralized mechanism to achieve a specific goal. That's not quite all though. There's um, somewhat of an unofficial definition for a microgrid, if you will, and that definition includes three components. So a microgrid must be local, it must be independent, and it also must be intelligent. So what do all those things mean? First, what do I mean by local? As it stands, much of our energy is generated far, far away from where it's ultimate being, uh, ultimately being used. In some cases, that energy must travel very long distances from its centralized power grid through transmission lines and distribution lines to reach its destination. This is not really the most efficient method because a portion of that energy is lost in the process of transmission. As a matter of fact, as much as 8 to 15% of it is lost in transit. A microgrid remedies that issue of inefficiency because it generates much of its energy close to where it's ultimately being used. A microgrid is also independent. Independence is where we really start to see a significant value proposition for the microgrid. Independence is referring to the microgrid's ability to disconnect from the central power grid. So why would this be significant? Well, 
During a major power outage caused by a storm or another major event, a microgrid has the ability to do something referred to as islanding, uh, whereby it disconnects from the grid and is able to operate independently so that its customers don't experience an interruption in service. As I mentioned earlier, climate events are becoming more and more frequent, not fewer and far in between. One of the major weaknesses of the current centralized grid infrastructure is that it's so massive and so interconnected. In fact, it's estimated that there are more than 5.7 million miles of transmission and distribution lines in the United States. So when there is an issue in one area of the grid, it can and will most likely affect a very large number of people. Now, I know what you're thinking. If microgrids work so effectively to prevent power outages, why don't they operate independently from the grid all the time? Well, in some cases, they actually do. In very remote areas where there is no central grid, they operate independently all the time. However, in most scenarios, they have a symbiotic relationship with the centralized grid. This relationship can be explained best in our third and final characteristic of the microgrid, which is intelligence. By intelligence, I'm referring specifically to the central control system or the central brain of the system. Um, it's software-based and in many cases, very highly sophisticated. So why is the central brain of the system so important? Well, as we discussed, a microgrid is made up of different components and it's a really great example of a system being greater than the sum of its individual parts. The central brain of the system works to utilize one or any combination of its components to achieve the goals of its customers. For example, the microgrid is connected to the central grid. This means it receives information on wholesale prices of energy. Therefore, when energy is inexpensive, it will opt to purchase energy from the central grid while its batteries, uh, while its battery storage charges. But later in the day during peak times and when energy is much more expensive, it will opt to stop, to stop purchasing power from the grid and instead discharge its batteries. This scenario is useful for customers looking to save um, on cost of energy. However, it may look a little different if your primary objective is to use the cleanest energy that's possible, for example, just depending on what your ultimate goals are. So what resources are out there for microgrids? Well, as I was saying earlier in the presentation, it is timely to discuss microgrids. In March of last year, the CPUC took action to allow for the implementation of a new PG&E microgrid program to benefit vulnerable communities. This action took place as a result of a decision in the prior year to require large investor-owned utilities to move more quickly to deploy microgrids to minimize the impact of power outages, including PSPS events. The pg e microgrid incentive program is expected to launch sometime this year with a program budget of $200 million. Um, and this program, as I said before, it will be focused on the most vulnerable community. So we'll be keeping an eye out for this. Um, I will certainly include some links in our follow-up email so, um, so that we will receive the most updated information. And that's everything that I have for microgrids right now. So I'm going to take a really quick pause here um, for any questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the chat box if you haven't already done so. And while folks are working on that, I would just like to remind everyone to please look out for our follow-up email later on today. We always try to get that email out to you on the afternoon of the fast chat, usually right around the lunch hour, right after. That email will have links to all the related fast chats I mentioned at the top of the presentation, uh, so you don't have to go searching for them. That email will also include links to important resources and information I referenced during the presentation. Lastly, take a quick second and add us to your email contacts. We want to be sure you're receiving our communications so that you can stay up to date on what's going on around the partnership. That email is 
info at sjvcleanenergy.org. And with that, I'm going to take one more peek at our chat box and see if we have any questions. I don't see anything coming through there, so hopefully that means, oh, one question just popped up. Let me see what we have here. I love to get questions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this was a comment. Um, Beyonce is the best graphic I've ever seen in the presentation. Thanks for the info. <laughs> Not a problem. That was my vision of independent with single girls. So it's always nice to have a little bit of fun. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Um, all right. So what's next for the Funded Fast Chat? Next month, we are going to talk about an upcoming grant opportunity, the Transformative Climate Communities Implementation Grant. Stay tuned for that. Also, um, I don't have them up just yet, but we will be working on scheduling uh, for some bonus fast chats. We will be revisiting the topic of the microgrids from more of a subject matter expert point of view. I'm not the subject matter expert, um, but we there will be um, some more updates on that coming up very soon, so keep an eye out on that. Of course, I hope to see you all for every episode of the Funded Fast Chat, but if you can't make it for whatever reason, just remember all of our fast chats are recorded and they can be accessed through our website or by going directly to our page on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like button while you're over there and subscribe to our channel. And just to close us out, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope everyone stays safe and stay healthy. Until next time.